What's up YouTube? Welcome back. So today's video is going to be something a little bit different from uh, the ordinary. Uh, it is a really nice day here in Kentucky. It's like 72 degrees today for the high and tomorrow is supposed to be just as nice. And then we're going to descend into the pits of cold winter. Uh, they're calling for <clears throat> 20, 30 degree, 40 degree highs. It's probably going to be like this from here on out. So it's time to get the race trailer uh, ready for winter, get it winterized, get it cleaned up, uh, make sure that this thing survives the winter. And I figured I'd bring you guys along for the ride and show you a couple little tips and tricks and some products that we found along the way uh, to make getting a race trailer ready for winter a little bit easier. So we're going to start today by getting this thing cleaned up. We're going to get it washed. Uh, and then it's gonna get an actual wax, which is a painstaking process, but it's important to do. I'll show you guys exactly what I like to use for washing and waxing. Uh, we have some uh, streak remover. If you've ever had a white race trailer, you know that uh, it can streak very easily when it's sitting, especially during the winter, uh, when it gets snow on it or rain or anything like that. Uh, and then we are gonna put a cover on it, of course, but my cover is not gonna be in until basically January at this point. Uh, covers are one of those things that it sucks because it seems like it doesn't matter how much money you spend on them They're not that great a quality and uh, the one I got last year I cheaped out got a $400 cover and it was terrible It, it didn't even survive the winter, but so for the meantime We want to give this thing as much protection as we possibly can So we're gonna start with a wash follow up with a wax and then I'll show you guys all the other little stuff that I like to do to make sure that one of them uh, holds up during the winter and then we'll uh, go through the process of doing the winterization so any of you guys that have a bathroom package trailer uh, water tank trailer whatever you have if there's water on board need to winterize them through the winter so we'll go through all that together so we'll start off right now by getting this thing washed up So now that we've got that side all washed and dried off, uh, I'll tell you guys some of the products that I use before I start on the front here. So just use a Chemical Guys car wash kit. Uh, and this is not a Chemical Guys uh, advertisement. This is just really the stuff I use. Uh, I like their stuff, so I use their wash mitt. Nothing special there, regular old wash mitt. And then on the soap, I really like whatever this stuff is here. Uh, it's a Snow Foam Auto Wash Honeydew. And I have a um, uh, one of those Canon deals that foams and all that stuff. I just wasn't worth busting out for this. But that soap works good in that. But it also works good if you're just washing it on too. And this soap has uh, some level of protection in it already. So that's kind of nice for if you're just going to wash it to go to the track. You don't have to spend the time to wax it. Uh, and then I'll follow it up with just a basic chamois. You can get it at the local parts store. Nothing special there. Uh, I don't like to use this on the race truck because with the black paint, uh, I don't know, something about a chamois just doesn't feel like it should be going on black paint, but it's perfect uh, for the race trailer here. We have, uh, we live out in the country, so we have well water and uh, it's really hard. So even with the water softening system that we have, it's still uh, easy to water spot. So anytime I wash something, I try to either blow it really good, like you've seen in some of the other videos with the blow, uh, what do you call that thing? the blower <laughs> i guess you call it uh, i try to blow it real good uh but on this i like to just run the chamois over it because that way i know it's dry and it kind of tells me if i missed any spots and kind of show up on the chamois and especially for if we're going to get ready to wax this thing and then for the front here behind me you can see that there's a lot of uh, bug splatter because that's where it catches it driving down the road leaving the track late at night catch a lot of bugs uh so i'll hit this with water and then i'll i'll go over it with the uh the washcloth 
but I like to use, once again, chemical guys, uh, this Diablo wheel cleaner. I actually like the orange citrus stuff better, but for whatever reason, it's hard to find. But any of their wheel cleaners, I'll spray on these bugs, and it actually does a really good job of uh, helping getting the bugs off of here. So just figured I'd take a second to show you guys some of the products that I use to do something like this. All right, so now that we got this thing all washed, got the bugs cleaned off of it, now we need to go over those black streaks that we were talking about to get rid of those things. So this is the product that, uh, actually Newman found this product and shared it with me, and it works really good. Uh, it's called Trailer Magic, if you guys can see that. Uh, the company that makes it, you can look it up by trailermagic.company.site, which is weird, trailermagic.company.site. Uh, but it's like a fabrication company that makes this stuff, but uh, it works really, really good. If you just have some streaks that like aren't that big of a deal uh, that are kind of coming off with just the soap, you can essentially use this as soap on those uh, streaks and just go over it with your washcloth and they'll come right off. It works really good. But if you have some more stubborn ones that maybe have been on there a little bit longer, maybe the sun's baked them in, uh, it says you can use this stuff by applying it dry and then scrub it in with a microfiber. So I've got a couple here that are uh, pretty bad. So I'm just gonna use a microfiber and this stuff on it dry and see what it does. So let's go over there and see what the results look like. So Mr. Sun is out and shining. So uh, it's gonna make this kind of hard to see. But if you look over here at that line, uh, that is a black streak that goes all the way to the top. Let's see if I can, yeah, you can see it better there. So. And starting to lose it but you get the idea there's a black streak here and there's actually a little bit of a black streak over there and you can really tell it like when you pull down the driveway and you see this thing it's pretty obvious uh, and you could tell it right there when the shades on it so I'm gonna set this up as a time-lapse and hopefully uh, we can watch the streak come off of here So now that we've got the driver's side all done, got the front here all cleaned up, everything streak removed, uh, essentially this side is ready to start waxing now. Uh, but before that, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get the other side and the back washed. Uh, we'll do the same procedure, but uh, I'm gonna go grab some lunch and get some RV antifreeze so we can winterize this thing. But uh, I'm not sure if we'll do the winterization first or if we'll finish washing. We'll probably go ahead and finish washing this thing first and then I'll figure out if we're gonna start waxing or if we're gonna do the winterizing. So a project like this is a, it's a big project. The bigger the trailer, the bigger the project. So uh, it takes a lot of time. If you're gonna take on something like this, I would a lot at least an entire eight to 10 hour day to it because uh, by the time we're done, it's gonna easily consume that much time. So I got the other side over here all washed up, ready to go. Uh, saved you guys the time lapse on that just so you weren't watching do the exact same thing over again. Uh, but basically that side's ready to go. Both sides are ready to start waxing now. Uh, one little thing that I didn't mention before is if your trailer has anywhere that it has seam sealer, uh, it's a really good idea to make sure that you clean all of the seam sealer stuff really well when you wash it. The seam sealer will get uh, like what I call mold, black nasties on it. And uh, if you let it go for too long, it'll stain your, ste your seam sealer. So while the sun's off of this side, I'm gonna go ahead and start waxing on this side here. And then later in the day, the sun will uh, transition over here and that side will have the shade on it. So I'll be able to wax that side. Uh, anytime you're waxing, it's always a good idea to do it in the shade. It's a little bit easier on white. Uh, it's a little bit more manageable, but dark colors are a no-go on waxing uh, in the sunshine. So I'm going to get waxing on this thing, and then I'll show you guys what I like to use on this.
guys get the idea. Wax on, wax off Mr. Miyagi down this whole thing. Uh, super time consuming, painstaking process, but uh, if you want it to hold up over the winter and you want to keep the thing looking nice, part of it. Now, yes, I know you could use this um, on a buffing machine and that would probably save you a lot of time <clears throat> but and i've probably told this story before but when i was 16 my first job was working at a local speed shop called instant karma racing and uh, every year in november they would go to florida for a race and they had a toter and a stacker and it was white of course and uh, i had to hand wax wax on wax off uh that whole thing so uh that's just the way that uh, i was taught to do it so that's how i'm going to continue to do it from here on out but basically what I'm using, once again, more chemical guys stuff. Uh, this is a white car care kit that they have. Uh, so this is like the normal paste wax. It's kind of interesting because uh, it's not really like your normal paste wax. Um, it's like jelly, which is kind of weird. And this is the first time I've used this, but so far I really like it. Uh, so you apply it with that and an applicator, and then you go over it with this nice white rag that they send you. And that really shows you how much the wax helps. I mean, we washed this thing and dried it off, and then look how dirty it is just from waxing. So the wax is really getting a lot of the contaminant, dirt, and dust out of the paint. Uh, and then you can follow it up with what they call their white light. And this is like a, like a little bit of a wax and a sealer. Uh, so I guess essentially the idea is, is you wax on, wax off, and then you wax on, wax off again with this. And this is supposed to uh, really help with the UV protection and all that. Uh, we probably really need to do this, but to be honest with you, probably not going to have time to get to this this time around, so probably save this step for next time. But that's the stuff that I use, and uh, so far I'm really liking this white stuff. So as you've seen there, quick little scrub, quick little polish on the wheels. Uh, <laughs> once again, more chemical guys stuff. Uh, this is basically just like a vinyl rubber plastic uh, protection deal that uh, usually you'd use on like vinyl tops and stuff. But I just spray that on the tires uh, so that way in my mind, I'm protecting them. Maybe I'm making them rot out even quicker, but uh, in my mind, it's keeping the rubber soft uh, and giving it a little bit of protection through the winter. But the biggest thing is putting these covers on. Uh, well, first off, if you have a trailer, you need to park it in at least gravel. If you're parking that thing in uh, grass or dirt, it just kills the tires. They will dry rot so freaking fast. And the problem with a dry rotted tire is, is they will blow on a trailer. When you blow a trailer tire, usually it wipes out the side of the trailer. It's a mess. So you don't want to have uh, any tire problems. So if you can, park your trailer on at least gravel. Concrete is always preferable or blacktop. Uh, but these tire covers are really important because they will help with the UV protection, uh, especially if you don't have a cover for your trailer. A lot of covers will uh, do a pretty good job of covering up 
the tire itself but uh, in my mind you can't get enough uv protection on a set of trailer tires uh, and then my rule of thumb is every three years regardless how the tires look replace them uh, even if you haven't driven the thing that much the sun is the killer on these tires and you just don't want to have a blowout trailers cost way too much money nowadays last thing you want to do is tear it up because of a blowout on a tire so this thing uh, is good to go as far as the wheels and tires go so i'm going to go do the other side i'll save you from that and then we'll regroup uh, and talk about winterizing all right, so to start the winterization process, uh, the first thing you need to do is make sure that your tanks are empty as far as your gray tank and your black tank. Uh, you wanna make sure that those things are emptied out. And then before we put any antifreeze in the system, uh, we need to go in here to the hot water heater and make sure that we turn the water flow to the hot water heater off because if you get antifreeze in your hot water heater, it'll basically junk it. And then we also need to drain the water out of the hot water heater. So I'll show you on mine how you do that and it should be pretty similar uh, to the same on your guys' stuff. So first thing first, you need to locate your hot water heater. Uh, mine is under the sink in here. Uh, yours could be in a number of different places, but locate your hot water heater. And then what you wanna do to turn the water off uh, on my particular setup, and it should be the same on yours, mine actually has a nice little uh, tag here that tells you what to do, but these are facing towards the, the valves are facing towards the hot water heater uh, for normal operation. So for winterization, we wanna shut these things off. So we're gonna turn the valves this way. Now that's going to block off the water flow from our tanks to the hot water tank. So when we do our winterizing, the water doesn't make its way to the tank here. And then after you do that, you'll need to drain the water from your tank. Uh, mine actually kind of sucks to drain because of where the drain's at over in the corner. You can't really get a garden hose on it. Hopefully yours is in a better location, but essentially you'll just stick a garden hose on that drain and then you open it up and that'll drain all the water out of your hot water heater. And then once all the water's out, close the drain and you're done as far as everything uh, to do with your hot water heater goes. So now we can go outside and we can start putting some antifreeze in this thing and start circulating that through. Okay, so now we are ready to start putting the antifreeze in the trailer here. <clears throat> you wanna make sure that you use an RV approved antifreeze. You don't wanna use regular automotive antifreeze on this stuff because it's your bath water. Um, I don't ever recommend drinking trailer water, but technically I guess you can. But you know, it's potable water, so you don't ever want automotive antifreeze in this. So make sure you use an RV style antifreeze. And your setup might be different than this. Uh, some setups have the city water connection and the fresh water tank all in one connection. And then if that's the case, you have to use a pump, but mine's separate. So I can just pour uh, all of these jugs of antifreeze in the fresh water here and then I'll show you what we do with that after that. All right, now that you got all the antifreeze in the tank, make sure your water pump's on and basically you'll just run the water until you see that it's coming out nice and pink. Run both valves hot and cold, coming out nice and pink. Go into your shower. Make sure it's coming out nice and pink and then go to your toilet and make sure that it's running through nice and pink. And then you'll want to put uh, some of this stuff in the gray water tank just to make sure. So you can just run it for a few seconds like that. And then same thing over here. You can just run these for a couple seconds. Make sure that you've got some antifreeze in your gray, in your, uh, gray water and black water tanks and then you know that this baby is all good to go water-wise for the winter. So we are pretty much about done with uh, getting this trailer ready for winter. Uh, something that I would recommend if you have a living quarters trailer, uh, take your bed sheets and stuff out of it over the winter. Uh, it's, it doesn't matter how well these things are sealed up, it seems like mice like to find their way in. And my in-laws actually told me about this stuff here. Uh, it's rodent repellent. 
and it, it's not harmful, doesn't kill the mice, uh, but apparently it deters them, and uh, they camp a lot, and they said that stuff works really good. You can get it at Tractor Supply. It's kind of expensive. It was like 20 bucks for four pouches of it or whatever, but apparently you just stick that stuff anywhere where you don't want mice, and uh, it does a really good job of keeping the mice out. So definitely something to consider, especially if you live in the country like I do, and you deal with mice. You wanna make sure that if you have a fridge, that you make sure that that thing's cleaned out, especially if the power is gonna be off. Uh, you know, just make sure that anything that could spoil or go bad uh, is, <laughs> is out of there. And then uh, if you do not have a battery disconnect, like this one actually does, uh, so I can actually turn the power off right there. But if you don't have that, then you want to locate your battery. If you got a bumper pull trailer, it's either out on the tongue or it's usually in the front cabinets and disconnect your battery for the winter. Cause otherwise, if you don't do that, uh, something will draw on it, I promise. And you'll go to get back in it in the spring and the battery will be dead and you'll have to charge it up and possibly have to buy a new battery. So uh, save yourself some time and some money and make sure if you don't have a disconnect that you turn the battery off. And then just a couple other little things that uh, I would probably suggest is if you have uh, boogie wheels or rollers on the back of your trailer, uh, I would actually probably put a little bit of anti-seize on those and spin them uh, so that way when it's sitting all winter long, if it gets snow and ice and if it starts to corrode inside of there, uh, the anti-seize will help from the corrosion. If you have a hydraulic jack, maybe cover that thing up to make sure that the cylinder doesn't try to rust. Usually a good uh, chrome cylinder won't, but uh, just, just to be safe, you know, I like to cover up anything that uh, can be expensive or costly uh, repair. But other than that, uh, with the cover, like I said, I don't have my cover yet, so no footage of doing that. Uh, but when you put a cover on, it's really important to use a bunch of rope and really strap that thing, tie that cover to your trailer. Uh, especially if you live somewhere like I do, I'm up on a ridge, I get a lot of wind during the winter. And if your cover is loose at all, It'll find a corner, it'll rip it apart, and covers are really expensive, so you don't want to just throw away five, six, seven, eight, nine hundred thousand dollars <laughs> in a cover. Uh, so you wanna make sure that that thing is as tight as it can be to the trailer. And the tighter it is to the trailer, the less likely it is of uh, scratching the paneling outside or anything like that. So I know this is a little bit different video than what uh, I would normally put out there, but I thought I had to go through this process anyways, and if it helps one person out, then this video is worth doing. So hopefully somebody out there gets something useful out of this. Uh, so probably gonna end this one here. And like always guys, I appreciate you watching. If you're new here, click the subscribe button, turn on that bell icon so you'll be notified anytime I post a new video. And be on the lookout every Monday um, from now basically to the end of the year, I'm going to do a video uh, highlighting uh, a Logan built part, uh, something that I sell. And that's something that I've realized that I haven't done any videos on. So every Monday I'm going to do a part video and then later in the week we'll do a, a video pertaining to something else. And we're, you know, going to do a lot more informational videos like this. So make sure you're subscribed so you can stay up to date when that stuff comes out. So like always guys, appreciate it. See you next time.